and sisters in Christ. Thank you for joining us this morning on the auspicious occasion of the ordination and installation of Archbishop Julian Lau. You join us here in, Hol in Holy Family Church, Kajang, where morning prayer has already begun. Morning prayer is the first office of the day. It is a prayer of the Universal Church a part of the Liturgy of the Hours, which is the common or public prayer of the Church, which is the heart and voice of the Church, which is one in praise of God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God, My soul is longing and yearning, is yearning for the thoughts of the Lord. My heart and my soul ring out your joy to God the living God. The sparrow herself finds a home. And the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by your altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. They are happy who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. They are happy strength is in you, in whose hearts are the roads to Zion. As they go through the bitter valley, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rain covers it with blessings. They walk with ever-growing strength. They will see the God of God in Zion. O oh Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob. Turn your eyes, O oh God, our shield. Look on the face of your anointed. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. The threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwellings of the weaker. For the Lord God is a rampart a sheep. He will give us His favor and glory. The Lord will not refuse any good to those who walk without blame. Lord God of hosts, happy the man who trusts in You. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. They are happy to dwell in your house, Lord. Antiphon 2. Come, let, let us go, go up, up to the, the mountain, mountain of the Lord. Lord. It shall come to pass in the latter days 
that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established at the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it and many people shall come and say Come, let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For all those Zion shall go forth the from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide for many peoples and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning Nations shall not live up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy as he was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, Come let, let us, us go, go up, up to, to the, the mountain, mountain of, of the Lord. The Lord. And Brothers and three. sisters in Christ, you are oh, joining us for morning Lord. prayer. Yes. Lords here at Holy Family Church, Kajang in preparation for the Episcopal ordination of the Most Reverend Julian Lau. The structure of Lords, which is a part of the daily office of the church, is three psalms, followed by a gospel canticle. Right now, they're praying their psalmody. One morning psalm, one Old Testament canticle, and a psalm of praise. They will then pray a short scripture reading followed by a responsory. Then the gospel canticle, the Benedictus, followed by intercessions, which are invocations to commend the day to God. Before the end of morning prayer, everybody joins together in the Lord's Prayer, the first of three times in the day where the church recommends that we pray the Lord's Prayer during Lord's, at Mass, and at Vespers in the evening. Next, after the praying of morning prayer, we will have the praying of the Rosary, and at 10 o'clock, the Mass will begin. Worship the Lord in His temple. Oh, I tremble before Him. Proclaim to the nations, God is King. The world He made from it is place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it best rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy. Let the presence of the Lord for He comes. He comes to rule the earth. With justice He will rule the world. He will 
judge their peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, oh sing, sing to the to Lord. Lord. Bless, Bless his, his name. name. Scripture reading. Talk and behave like people who are going to be judged by the law of freedom, because there will be judgment without mercy for those who have not been merciful themselves. But the merciful need have no fear of judgment. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Short responsory. Blessed be the Lord from age to age. Be the Lord from age to age. He alone has wrought marvelous works. Blessed be the Lord from age to age. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Lord from age to age. Please Benedictus stand. Antiphon. Please Blessed stand. be the Lord our God. Oh. Blessed be the Lord the God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord, our God. 
intercessions. In the life of His incarnate Son, God has shown us the dignity of man's labor. With this in mind, we pray. Lord, bless our work. We bless you, Lord, for bringing us to this day. We thank you for protecting our lives and giving us what we need. Lord, bless our work. Be with us, Lord, as we take up our daily tasks and help us to remember that it is in your world we live and work. Lord, bless our work. You have called Reverend Julian Liao to the order of bishops to shepherd responsibly the people entrusted to his care. Together with Reverend Julian, help us to build a just and Christian society. Lord, bless our work. Stay with us and with everyone we meet this day. Let us give your joy and your peace to the world. Lord, bless our work. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Concluding prayer. King of heaven and earth, Lord, Lord God, God rule, rule over our hearts, our hearts and, and bodies, bodies this day. Sanctify us and guide our every thought, word and deed, according to the commandments of your law, so that now and forever your grace may free and save us. We, we, make, we make this prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We have just concluded morning prayer. And now the rosary will be prayed. At this time, I invite all of you to join in with the congregation, the ministers, the sisters, the brothers here in Holy Family Church in praying the rosary, especially remembering the intentions of the Most Reverend Julian Lau suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. We shall sing the Ave. The first joyful mystery, the Annunciation of the Good News of Salvation. The Virgin shall give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. Meditation, the joy of saying yes to God. Be it done to me according to thy word. During this mystery, we unite ourselves to Mary's obedience to God's word, to her interior disposition of complete submission to his will, whereby she totally cooperated his grace every moment of her life, even though she did not always understand how, why, or what God is going to do with her life. Intention. Today we thank Reverend Julian Liao for answering yes to his appointment as Archbishop of the Church of Kuala Lumpur and pray that he conforms his will to that of God's, lost in humility and burning love for all entrusted to his care. This decade will be recited in English. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be thine, honored as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most in thine mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. The second joyful mystery, the visitation of Jesus and Mary. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Meditation, the joy of trust. Mary trusted that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. In this mystery, Mary sets the example of neighborly love and trust. At the visitation, Mary is called blessed by Elizabeth because of her perfect trust in God. Blessed is she who trusted. Perfect trust is based not on ourselves, but on the infinite perfection of God. Intention, Jesus, we unite ourselves to the perfect trust of Mary and pray through her intercession that Reverend Julian Liao's trust in God may become perfect too and like Mary would bring the life of Christ into the lives of those around him. By the infinite power of your Eucharistic love, we beg you, dear Jesus, to capture conquer and cast out every doubt, fear and anxiety that he may have, so that your peace and joy may reign in his heart. Sweet heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in you. This decade will be recited in Tamil. Parutirikre Engkel Pidami, Mudi Nama Machika Padudaga, Mudi Rachi and Varga, Mudi Sitam Parlotil Sei Padukola, Pulagatlam Sei Padudaga. Aru Nirinda Marie, Walga, Kartar Mudini, Pingalukulas Rikapatavel Niri. Mudah kreatif kania ini Yesus masuk ke tempat tawari. Aruh ini rendah Maria, Walga, Kartar Mudini, Pinggul Kulas ke tempat tawal Niri. Mudah kreatif kania ini Yesus masuk ke tempat tawari. Arul Nirinda Marie, Walga, Kartar Mudini, Pingal Kulasir Vilke Pataval Niri, Mudia Trivating Kanyagi, Yesu Master Vilke Patavari Arul Nirinda Marie, Walga, Kartar Mudini, Pingal Kulasir Kapataval Niri, Mudia Trivating Kanyagi, Yesu Master Vilke Patavari
அருள் நிறைந்த மரியே வாழ்க கர்த்தர் முடினே பெங்களுக்குள் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவள் நீரி முடிய திருவீட்டின் கனியாகி இயேசும் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவரே அருள் நிறைந்த மரியே வாழ்க கர்த்தர் முடினே பெங்களுக்குள் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவள் நீரி முடிய திருவீட்டின் கனியாகி இயேசும் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவரே அருள் நிறைந்த மரியே வாழ்க கர்த்தர் முடினே பெங்களுக்குள் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவள் நீரி முடிய திருவீட்டின் கனியாகி இயேசும் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவரே அருள் நிறைந்த மரியே வாழ்க கர்த்தர் முடினே பெங்களுக்குள் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவள் நீரி முடிய திருவீற்றின் கனியாகி இயேசும் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவரே அருள் நிறைந்த மரியே வாழ்க கர்த்தர் முடினே பெங்களுக்குள் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவள் நீரி முடிய கனியாகி இயேசும் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவரே அருள் நிறைந்த மரியே வாழ்க கர்த்தர் முடினே பெங்களுக்குள் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவள் நீரி முடிய திருவீற்றின் கனியாகி இயேசும் ஆசிர்விக்கப்பட்டவரே பிதாக்கள் சுதனுக்கும் பரிசுத்த ஆவிக்கு மகிமை உண்டாவதாக ஆதில் இருப்பது போல இப்போதும் எப்போதும் என்றென்றும் இருப்பதாக ஓயின் கொடுத்தாலும் எங்களை நர்வை நெருப்பிலிருந்து ரட்சித்தலும் சகலாந்து பலவாரி நெருப்பிலும் முதிரக்கும் அதிகம் the third joyful mystery the birth of jesus in bethlehem the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love meditation the joy of adoration my spirit finds joy in god my savior god chose jesus to be born in bethlehem who would now dwell with us forever as the living bread come down from heaven the word made flesh like mary and joseph the shepherds and the wise men bowed in joyful adoration upon seeing the glory of god made manifest through christ child intention we pray for reverend julian liao's expressed intentions for the archdiocese of kuala lumpur to be a true example of what it means to care for all and to share with all the blessings that has have been endowed with a place where we are truly brothers and sisters regardless of race ethnicity religion political affiliation all pilgrims on the journey to life towards our finality with God our creator this decade will be recited in bahasa malaysia bapa kami yang ada di surga dimuliakanlah namamu datanglah kerajaanmu jadilah kehendakmu di atas bumi seperti di dalam surga
Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu. Terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu. Terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu. Terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu. Terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu. Terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu, terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu, terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu, terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu, terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Salam Maria penuh rahmat Tuhan sertamu, terpujilah engkau di antara wanita dan terpujilah buah tubuhmu Yesus. Kemuliaan kepada Bapa dan Putra dan Roh Kudus. Ya Yesus yang baik, Ampunilah dosa-dosa kami, selamatkanlah kami dari api neraka, dan hantarlah jiwa-jiwa ke dalam surga, terutama mereka yang sangat memerlukan kerahimanmu. Amin. joyful mystery, the presentation and consecration of Jesus in the temple. This child is destined to be opposed, rejected, and you yourself shall be pierced with a sword. Meditation, the joy of consecration. Do not be saddened this day for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. As, as prescribed by the Jewish law, Mary and Joseph kept to their religious obligations when they took the child Jesus to the temple to offer him to God and before Simeon, who proclaimed the greatness of God when he said, my eyes have seen the salvation of all the peoples to see, a revealing light to the Gentiles, 
the glory of your people. Intention We pray that Reverend Julian Liao be consecrated to Mary, who will take all his thoughts, words, and actions and make them pleasing to Jesus by purifying them in her love, clothing them in her merits, and presenting them to her divine Son, Jesus. May Reverend Julian embrace his duties and fulfill them faithfully, that he will do his utmost to be a man of integrity and to show tenderness to all. We also pray for his fidelity whenever faced with trials and tribulations. This decade will be recited in Mandarin. Yuan 你的亲子耶稣同受赞颂。你的亲子耶稣同受赞颂。万福玛利亚，你充满圣宠，主与你同在，你在妇女中受赞颂，你的亲子耶稣同受赞颂。万福玛利亚，你充满圣宠，主与你同在，你在妇女中受赞颂。你的亲子耶稣同受赞颂。万福玛利亚，你充满圣宠，主与你同在，你在妇女中受赞颂，你的亲子耶稣同受赞颂。万福玛利亚，你充满圣宠，主与你同在，你在妇女中受赞颂，你的亲子耶稣同受赞颂。万福玛利亚，你充满圣宠，主与你同在，你在妇女中受赞颂。For those of you who are just tuning in, welcome and thank you for joining us for the Episcopal Ordination and Installation Mass for the new Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. We are coming to you this morning live from the Church of Holy Family in Kajang, Selangor, which was once the parish of Archbishop Julian. A native of Suramban, the Most Reverend Julian completed his primary and secondary education at St. Paul's Institution in Suramban. He later studied at the University of New South Wales, where he obtained a Bachelor of Building in 1989. Following a three-year working stint in the private sector, Archbishop Julian commenced his seven-year formative studies for the priesthood at the College General Major Seminary in Penang 
in 1994. He was ordained a priest on the 20th of April 2002 at the Church of the Visitation in Seremban. After serving in the Archdiocese for five years, Archbishop Julian left to further his studies at the Pontifical Gregor Gregorian University in Rome, where he obtained a licentiate in church history. Upon his return to Malaysia in 2010, he was posted to the College General Major Seminary in Penang as lecturer and dean of studies until his appointment as Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. This morning, we're pleased to welcome Father Clarence Davidas of the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. Father Clarence is a member of the College of Consultors of the Archdiocese. He's director of the Archdiocesan uh, Pastoral Institute, the director of the Catholic Research Center, chairman of the Archdiocesan Pastoral Center, principal secretary of the Christian Federation of Malaysia, and a consultor of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue. Father Clarence, good morning. Today we mark another milestone in the history of the Catholic Church here in Malaysia with the installation of the fourth Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. Perhaps it might also be a good time to look back at the history of the Church in Malaysia. Can you tell us, Father, when and how it all began? Good morning, Simon, and to all our viewers at home and also in the different churches that people are gathered. Well, the history of the church in Malaysia, well, many of us would remember that Christianity came to Malaysia with the dawn of the Portuguese that was already in the early 1500s. And in terms of the establishment of the churches here, um, the year 1786 would be an important landmark because it was then that the church was kind of established as an extension of the Vicariate of Siam, or now known as Thailand, and established in, in Penang, and the Church uh, of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, where the first Monsignor Garnol was nominated to lead the Vicariate of Siam and Kedah. But it was in 1810 onwards that the church slowly began to, to expand here in Peninsula Malaysia. But I would say that it was only in 1888 that it was a historical moment because there was a separation between Siam and Malaysia, uh, known as Malaya before, that we had the Diocese of Malacca. And it was here that the early churches were started to be built. And I think the first church would be the Church of the Visitation in Saramban uh, that was built in 1883. But in terms of uh, organization, creation of dioceses, it would be the year 1995, much later, that the old diocese of Malacca was now divided into, an, uh, into Kuala Lumpur, Penang, and Malacca, Johor. And the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur had its first bishop, uh, which is Bishop Dominic Van Dagen, and he was ordained in August 1955. In 1972, Singapore ceased to be part of the, of the diocese in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur was made the Metropolitan Archdiocese and Malacca, Johor and Penang became the suffragan dioceses. So it was in 1972 that Kuala Lumpur was raised to, the, uh, to be a Metropolitan Archdiocese. So that was how it all began for us uh, here in the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. Thank you, Father. I think we actually have a video clip uh, of the installation of Bishop Dominic Van Dagen uh, in August of 1955. Uh, but we will take a look at that in a minute. You mentioned that um, the Diocese of Kuala Lumpur is a metropolitan archdiocese, and actually today we're installing the metropolitan archbishop of the diocese. Could you explain to us what difference is it, or what, what, what is a metropolitan archdiocese? Well, in terms of the running of the dioceses, uh, there isn't much difference. But in terms of some jurisdiction uh, uh, objectives, that there is one diocese that's considered as the main diocese, that will be the Metropolitan Archdiocese, and the other two are known as suffragan dioceses. Uh, for example, in terms of jurisdiction, for example, if, let's say, 
in a diocese, there's a vacant uh, seat of the bishop and the College of Consultants cannot decide, then the Metropolitan Archbishop would be asked to intervene and to, to be able to choose uh, someone to be an administrator of the diocese. But in terms of administration, jurisdiction, as we know in the church, uh, each diocese is quite autonomous. Uh, they have direct links to the Holy Father, the Bishop of Rome. And also that some people would say that, you know, the Archbishop of the Metropolitan Diocese, Archdiocese would be like the first among equals, you know. So among the, among the three bishops of the peninsula of Malaysia, uh, the Metropolitan Archbishop would be first in that sense. But each diocese is quite independent, it's quite autonomous in terms of its administration. Thank you, Father. I think we can now take a look at that clip of the installation, the historic video of the installation of the first Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. That was Bishop Dominic Vendagen, and that was way back in August 1955. The impressive consecration ceremony took place in the new St. John's Cathedral at Bukit Nanas, where more than 10,000 people flocked to watch the pageant and to share in the solemn rejoicing. Visiting bishops and archbishops graced the high occasion and lent colour and dignity with their magnificent robes. The Archbishop of Malacca, Monsignor Olcomendi, conducted the ceremony, which lasted for three hours and which was attended by more than 250 of the new bishop's relatives. and moving service reached its climax with the Holy Communion and the placing of the bishop's mitre. A proud day for an old boy of Malacca's St. Francis Institution and for all Roman Catholics in Malaya. It's a very rare video, uh, piece of video footage, Father. Um, we, we know today has been a, uh, is an auspicious event, but it's also a long-awaited event. We, we knew about Archbishop uh, Murphy's retirement back in December, and it, we've all been waiting for a long time for a new Archbishop. Could you perhaps, Father, share with us a bit about the process of appointing a bishop? Is there an election like there is with the Pope? Unlike uh, the election of a pope, where the cardinals elect uh, the pope, in terms of the appointment of uh, bishops, uh, usually the apostolic nunciature in the different countries uh, would make inquiries every few years uh, to ask people, lay people, priests, to submit names, three names of people whom they think could be bishops. And especially when there is a vacant seat uh, in terms of the archdiocese or the diocese, uh, and then it becomes a bit more intense. Uh, then they make inquiries. Uh, priests are sent letters. Uh, lay people are sent letters also. But those who receive the letters are supposed to keep them uh, in secret. Uh, they cannot talk about it. So they nominate people and they make inquiries about their character, uh, about their, their abilities. After which, also the outgoing archbishop will also make uh, suggestions uh, to the uh, nunciature, to the nuncio. Uh, after which the nuncio would send it to, to, to Rome. Uh, in terms of Malaysia and many other countries uh, which are under the congregation for the evangelization of peoples, uh, it is sent to uh, this congregation. But in some other places, countries that are not under this congregation, they would go to the congregation of bishops. So the congregation for the evangelization of people will make a study of the three names that the nunciature, the nuncio would send to them uh, and then present it uh, to the Holy Father, and the Holy Father uh, makes an, an informed choice of who the candidate that he would like to appoint to be the bishop. Thank you, Father. I see. So the Apostolic Nuncio uh, 
the outgoing bishop and uh, other members of the senior clergy in the diocese play an important role uh, in uh, so um, what do the uh, Archbishop Joseph, the Apostolic Nuncio, and Archbishop Murphy, who are both here today, what, what are their roles in the liturgy today? Well, I'm told that uh, the Nuncio, uh, Archbishop Joseph Marino, uh, would be the presider at the Eucharist, at least the first part of the Eucharist, uh, whereas the ones who will be consecrating the bishop uh, in the Catholic Church, we need three bishops to consecrate another bishop. Uh, the principal consecrator will be Archbishop John Ha, who is the president of the Malaysian uh, Bishops' Conference. And the co-consecrators uh, would be Archbishop Emeritus Murphy Pakiam and also Archbishop Emeritus Sorter Fernandez. So it's quite significant that we have two uh, Archbishop Emeritus uh, with us from Kuala Lumpur who will be consecrating the new Archbishop Julian Liao. Thank you. And uh, today is obviously a very special Mass. It's, uh, not a, uh, it's not something that a lot of people will be very familiar with. Could you let us know if there are any special elements that we should keep out for as we are all watching the Mass today? Well, in terms of the first part of the Eucharist, uh, it'll be just like any other Eucharistic celebration, the first part at least until the Liturgy of the Word. And after the Liturgy of the Word will come the Rite of Ordination. Uh, it is here that the bishop would be called and then also the letter of appointment of the Holy Father would be read to the public. Uh, it is here that you know everybody gets to hear the letter, the official letter. With this proclamation, he is now accepted to be ordained as bishop. And after which he would be consecrated, there will be the different rites uh, where he will be anointed and he will also be presented with the ring, the mitre, the crozier. These are all symbols that have been, you know, that are historically rich uh, in the church in terms of uh, the appointment of bishops to show that he is now the shepherd of the archdiocese. Thank you so much, Father. I, you're already in your vestments, ready to start Mass, and I know outside the, uh, the ministers are all gathering, already ready to come into the church, so we shouldn't delay you any further. Father Clarence, thank you so much for joining us today and for your insights into this special day for the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. Thank you, Simon, uh, and I wish everyone who is at home in churches uh, to be united with us in prayer during this auspicious occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Selamat datang saudara dan saudari yang terkasih yang dari jauh dan dekat ke gereja Holy Family Kajang. Hari ini di samping meraikan hari Minggu biasa ke-27 dengan kegembiraan dalam hati kita, kita turut bergembira dan bersyukur kepada Allah di atas pentahbisan Penggembala baru kita, Reverend Julian Liao, untuk mengembalakan umat Allah di Keuskupan Agung Kuala Lumpur. Perarakan masuk akan diiringi oleh setiap seorang wakil daripada pelbagai majelis, pelayanan, daerah, kerasulan, persidangan, dan diiringi kumpulan para padri gereja yang mencerminkan rakan sekerja di Keuskupan Agung. Pelaksana utama pentahbisan ialah Yang Mulia Reverend John Ha Tiong Hock, Uskup Agung Kucing yang akan dibantu oleh Yang Mulia Reverend Murphy Pakiam dan Yang Mulia Reverend Soter Fernandez 
kedua-dua yang merupakan Uskup Agung Emeritus Kuala Lumpur. Yaitu tisai halilirendum, kajang, tiru kudumba ala yatir ke bandirikum, unggal ane varayum, varaver padil, magilchikol hero, podo kalatin, irwati yera wadu waratil, irkum nam, pudia ayarai, tiru nilai padatu wadil, peru magilchikonde, yellam bala, yerai wanek, nandri kurhinro, yerai makkalai, wadi nadatte, kola lampo, per ayarake, arul tiru julian liau. Yendre, tiru nilai padat terpadhirar. Kola lampu, maa marai maa batet tin, udan udai palar kel, yendra murayil, palveiru mandranggal, paniturai kel, maa batanggal, apostolikam, maa nartu mandram, mudeliya batrin, pradhi nidi kel udan, guru mar kelum, yendra ya nuraiwo pavaniyil, idam petir kirar kel, yendra ya sadangirke, coaching peraya, medahe. John Ha Tiong Ho, Talai Mai, Tiri Nilai Yala Rahe, Sail Paduwar, Kola Lampur, Per Ayer Kelah Yerindi, Pani Woi Wu Petre, Nirai Nilai Per Ayer Hal, Sotter Fernandez Sum, Murphy Pakiam, Awerik Ke, Tunai Puri Wal Hal. Rulie Huan Ying, Lai Zi Yuan Fang, Jing Chu De Mei Yue. 欢迎你们来到嘉颖盛家堂。今天，在这长年期第二十七周里，我们满怀喜悦、欢欣及感恩之情，感谢天主为我们祝圣一位新的牧者——廖炳坚神父，以牧养吉隆坡总教区的天主子民，为反映总教区各阶层的共同承担与彼此担待的愿景。今天的敬堂游行队伍是由本教区各组织代表所组成，他们分别来自吉隆坡总教区各理事会、善会组织、总铎区、不同语言团体、男女修会及司铎团。今天敬慕大典的主理是古敬总教区的夏长福总主教。而乡里则由吉隆坡总教区巴吉安荣修总主教和费南迪荣修总主教担任。A warm welcome. Good morning again for all of you who are just joining us now at home and in churches around Kuala Lumpur. Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Episcopal ordination and installation mass. For the new Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, the Most Reverend Julian Liao, we are coming to you live from the Church of Holy Family in Kajang, Selangor, where, as you can see, uh, the church is already filling up in anticipation of this auspicious event. Seated behind me in the main part of the church are foreign ambassadors and dignitaries, representatives from our own government, from the interreligious councils and, of course, members of Archbishop Julian's own family. Above us in the gallery are hundreds more parishioners of Holy Family Church, which used to be Archbishop's Ju Archbishop Julian's own parish. And outside the church, uh, crowds of thousands of Catholic lay people, religious brothers and sisters from all over the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur, and indeed from all over Malaysia, have been arriving since dawn to celebrate the orda ordination of the Most Reverend Julian Lau as the new Metropolitan Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. As Mass begins, we will be joined in turn by nearly 200 concelebrating priests and bishops. The procession is now beginning and everyone is rising to greet the clergy coming into the church. At today's Mass, the Apostolic Nuncio for Malaysia, the Archbishop uh, Joseph Marino will be presiding with Archbishop Emeritus Murphy Pakiam, Archbishop John Ha, 
Archbishop of, uh, of Kuching. And, and the Most Reverend so, uh, Soto Fernandez, Archbishop Emeritus of Kuala Lumpur. As everyone is rising, you can see now, hopefully on your screens, the beginning of the procession into the church. The first part of the Mass will just be a regular celebration of the Holy Eucharist.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone choose to set your servant and priest, Amen. 
如果你们在基督内获得了鼓励、爱的劝勉、圣神的交往、哀怜和同情，你们就因彼此意见一致，同情相爱，同心合意，思念同样的事，以满全我的喜乐。不论做什么，不从私见，也不求虚荣，只存心谦下。彼此该想自己不如人，个人不同体，并没有以自己与天主同等，唯应当把持不舍的，却使自己空虚，取了奴仆的形体，与人相似，形状也一见如人。他贬义自己，天地上和地下的一切，一听到耶稣的名字。无不屈膝叩拜，一切唇舌无不明认耶稣基督是主，以光荣天主圣父。为此，我可爱的，就如你们常常听了命。
不但与你们同在的时候，就是如今不在的时候，你们更应该听命。你们要怀着恐惧站立，努力成就你们得救的事，因为是天主在你们内工作，使你们愿意，并使。The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. As soon as he sees a wolf coming, and then the wolf from the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep. And there are other sheep I have.
Most Reverend Father, the Church of Kuala Lumpur asks you to ordain this priest, Julian Liao, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God. To our beloved son, Julian Liao Beng Kim, priest of the church, as you have grown in doctrine and pastoral experience, therefore, you are considered wholly suitable for the sustained and enduring care of the flock in Kuala Lumpur. On that account, after consultation with the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, we appoint you by our apostolic authority as the Metropolitan Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur with all its added rights and imposed obligations which are coherent with your appointment and your status as prescribed by the sacred canons. Henceforth, before your episcopal ordination, which you may receive from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome, you must make the profession of faith and an oath of fidelity to us and our successes according to the laws of the Church. Hence, you will make known the fact of your election to the clergy and the faithful whom we lovingly exhort to accept you as teacher and leader. Finally, beloved son, we wish to send you our wishes from afar, that you would be strengthened by valid pastoral work and sustained by heavenly assistance and would efficaciously perform your office of shepherd among your faithful. Given in Rome, at St. Peter's on the third day of the month of July in the 2014th year, the second year of our pontificate, Francis. Francis. <laughs> 因此我们希望安排好一切治理基隆波继续地照顾在基隆波的羊群按照最后的规律
，他们亲切地勉励你，接受你做他们的老师和领导者。最后，亲爱的儿子，我们从那遥远的地方发送我们的祝愿，希望你有天主的支持，借正当的牧灵工作。在教友们之中，有效的执行你牧者的职务。发自罗马圣伯多大殿，二零一四年七月三日，任教宗的第二年，方济各。Franciscus Uskup Pelayan daripada hamba-hamba Tuhan. Kepada anak terkasih kami, Julian Liao, Ben Kim, Imam Gereja Kuala Lumpur, dipilih sebagai Uskup Agung di Tahta Metropolitan yang sama. Salam dan berkat apostolik. Kongregasi Penginjilan, kami melantik Status anda seperti yang ditetapkan oleh hukum-hukum suci. Seterusnya, sebelum penyelarasan episkopal anda yang anda boleh menerima daripada mana-mana uskup Katolik di luar kota Rome, anda perlu membuat pengakuan iman dan mengangkat sumpah kesetiaan kepada kami dan pengganti kami. Mengikut undang-undang gereja. Oleh itu, anda akan memaklumkan hakikat pemilihan anda sebagai kepada kelurus dan semua yang beriman, yang setia, yang akan kami kasihi untuk menerima anda sebagai guru dan pemimpin. Akhirnya, anak terkasih, kami ingin menghantar hasrat kami dari jauh. Yang anda akan diperkukuhkan dengan kerja pastoral yang sah dan dikekalkan oleh bantuan syurgawi, sehingga secara berkesan melaksanakan jawatan anda sebagai gembala di kalangan umat beriman anda. Diberikan dari Rome di Santo Petrus pada hari yang ketiga bulan Julai dalam tahun 2000. 14. Jawatan Paus Tahun Kedua Franciscus Francis Ayerum Kadawulin Paniyalar Gelin Paniyalarum Yen Anbu Magen Julian Liao Beng Kim Kuala Lumpur Talat Tericabayin Guruum Ade Talat Tericabayane Wier Mare Mawatatin பேராயராக தேர்ந்தெடுக்கப்பட்டுள்ளவருக்கு வாழ்த்துக்களையும் அப்போஸ்தலிக்க ஆசிரியையும் தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் ஆண்டவரின் உதவியுடன் எந்த அளவுக்கு மகிழ்ச்சியாக ஒருவர் தன் வாழ்வில் பயணத்தை தொடர்ந்திட வேண்டும் என்பதற்காக அகில உலக திருச்சபையின் எல்லா நிலைகளிலும் அதற்குரிய பராமரிப்புடன் பாதுகாக்கப்பட்டு வேண்டும் என்று விரும்புகிறோம் எனவே அவர் தகுந்த Dumana, other way petru, Magila Vendum in Badrakaka, Nangal, Anaitayum, Yer Padaseya, Brimbagro, Kola Lambur, Weir, Marai Mavata Tirk, either Mundi a pair ayer, Maria de Kuria, Sagodra, Murphy, Nicholas Xavier Pakim, Avergal, Adai Alum Purupilrindi, Vilaku Badrakana, Tangalin, Pani Vilakal, Madale, Anapiadan. Kuala Lumpur Uyer Marai Mawat Terke Or Ayer Tewai Padagrade. Iden Purut Punidamikka Panigalai Nirevetrum Bagayil Or Varai Ayer Akhe Anipida Tewai Yen Badanai Nangal Unarndo. Yenabe Marai Kolbi Lirum Meip Pani Sarnda Anubhutilum Walarci Adain Dulle Yen Anbu Kuriya Maganana Tanggalidam Mulu Nambi Kayudanum Anugro. Iden porote Kuala Lumpuril ulle irai makal, todarnd paramarit padga kap padar kake, tanggal illa wagilum mutrilum porutamanaber yen badanai unarukinro.
கோலலம்பூர் உயர் மறை மாவட்டத்திற்கு பேரா ஆயராக நியமிக்கிறோம் இதனால் உறவுமை நரக நகரத்திற்கு வெளியில் உள்ள எந்த ஒரு கத்தோலிக்க ஆயரிடமிருந்தும் ஆயர் திருநிலைப்பாட்டை பெறுவதற்கு முன்பே விசுவாச பிரமாணத்தை அறிக்கையிட்டு திருச்சபையின் சட்டங்களுக்கு ஏற்ப எங்களுக்கு எங்களின் வழிவரும் திருத்தந்தையர்களுக்கும் பிரமாணிக்கமாக இருப்பதற்கான வாக்குறுதியை கட்டாயம் வழங்க வேண்டும் எனவே தாங்கள் ஆசிரியராகவும் தலைவராகவும் இருந்து வழிநடத்த வேண்டுமென்று அன்புடன் கேட்டுக்கொள்ளப்படும் குருக்கள் மற்றும் விசுவாசிகளிடம் தாங்கள் ஆயர் நிலைக்கு தேர்ந்தெடுக்கப்பட்டதை அறிய செய்ய கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறோம் இறுதியாக அன்பு மகனே எங்களுக்குடைய தகுதியான மேய்ப்பு பணியால் உறுதி பெற வேண்டும் என்பதற்கு விண்ணக உதவியால் காக்கப்பட வேண்டும் என்பதற்கும் விசுவாசிகளின் மத்தியில் எதிர்பார்க்கப்படும் வகையில் ஆயருக்குரிய தங்களின் பதவியை செயல்படுத்திட வேண்டும் என்பதற்கும் நாங்கள் வெகு தொலைவிலிருந்து எங்களின் அன்புக்குரிய வாழ்த்துக்களை அனுப்புகின்றோம் இது ரோமையில் உள்ள புனித பேதுரு பேராலயத்தில் ஈராயிரத்து பதினான்காம் ஆண்டு ஜூலை மாதம் மூன்றாம் நாள் என்னுடைய திருத்தந்தை பணி பொறுப்பின் இரண்டாம் ஆண்டு வழங்கப்பட்டது பிரான்சிஸ் திருத்தந்தை Saudara-saudari terkasih dalam Kristus Hari ini Hati kita penuh Dengan kegembiraan Sebab Bapa Suci kita Telah melantik seorang gembala Bagi kita Di Keuskupan Agung Kuala Lumpur Gembala Yang telah dipilih Iaitu Monsignor Julian Liao adalah paling layak dan sesuai bagi kedudukan tersebut. Bacaan pertama dari kitab Nabi Yeremia memastikan kita bahawa pelantikan calon yang berbahagia ini telah diingin oleh Tuhan Allah sebelum beliau dilahirkan. Oleh yang demikian, pelantikan beliau 
oleh Bapa Suci disahkan sebagai pilihan Tuhan Allah. Sebagai gembala keuskupan yang diamanahkan kepada beliau, uskup menjalankan tugas-tugas beliau dalam nama Kristus. Yaitu bagi pihaknya dan dengan kuasanya. Beliau menerima kebenaran dan kekuasaan Kristus daripada roh kudus yang bertindak ke atas beliau dengan penumpangan tangan dalam upacara pentapisan uskup. Apabila uskup bertindak demi nama Yesus Kristus, gembala baik, beliau meneruskan misinya, yaitu memelihara domba-domba dia dengan sabda dan sakramen, dan juga memimpin mereka dalam jalan ke kekudusan. Oleh yang demikian, uskup patutlah menerima sifat dan sikap Kristus kembala baik. Bacaan kedua menjelaskan sifat dan sikap ini. Kristus mengosongkan diri untuk menjelma menjadi seorang hamba sehingga dia menyerah nyawatnya atas salib agar segala dombanya akan selamat dan hidup. Oleh sebab sifat dan sikap Kristus ini, uskup pun menjelma menjadi seorang gembala yang rendah hati dan tidak mementingkan diri, murah hati dan sudi menyerah diri untuk kebajikan dan keselamatan umat-umat yang diamanahkan kepada beliau. Matabat uskup diturunkan kepada kita daripada para rasul Kristus secara berterusan. Sesungguhnya, Tuhan Kristus mengamanahkan para rasulnya untuk meneruskan misinya dan menyebarkan Injilnya ke seluruh dunia. Para rasul menurunkan kuasa yang diberikan mereka kepada pengganti mereka. Dengan yang demikian, pewarisan kerasulan ini diturunkan dari satu generasi ke satu generasi agar segala bangsa di seluruh dunia dan dalam setiap generasi akan menerima Injil Tuhan Yesus dan hidup. Hari ini, pewarisan kerasulan akan dijalankan di tengah-tengah kita yang berhimpun di sini. Sebentar lagi, Monsignor Julian Liao akan ditabis sebagai seorang pengganti rasul bagi kaum Katolik di Keuskupan Agung Kuala Lumpur. Hati kita memanglah penuh dengan syukuran kepada Tuhan Allah atas rahmat besar ini kepada kita. Kita diberikan seorang gembala yang menyerupai Kristus gembala baik. Melalui beliau, Kristus, gembala baik, menjaga domba-dombanya di keuskupan agung Kuala Lumpur dan memberikan mereka kehidupan. My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, today we rejoice that the Holy Father has appointed a shepherd for the Lord's flock in the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. 
Archbishop-elect Julian Liao, has been deemed worthy and most suitable for this important office in the Archdiocese. The first reading taken from Prophet Jeremiah assures us that this appointment of the Archbishop-elect had been in the plan of God even before he was formed in his mother's womb. In the light of this assurance, what the Holy Father did was to confirm this divine election of the new shepherd. As shepherd of the diocese entrusted to his care, the bishop acts in the person of Christ, that is, in his name. And Jesus Christ makes this personification of him possible by the power of the Holy Spirit given to the bishop through the laying on of hands. Acting in the name of Christ, the Good Shepherd, the bishop continues his great mission of nourishing his flock by word and sacrament and leading them in the path of holiness. To this end, the bishop needs to take on the distinctive qualities of Christ the Good Shepherd. In one concise statement, the second reading for today's Mass captures these qualities of Christ. He emptied himself of his divinity to assume the condition of a slave to the point of laying down his life on the cross. He did this in order to protect all his sheep so that they might have life. The bishop ought to be humble and self-effacing, generous and self-giving to the flock entrusted to his care. The office of the bishop has come down to us in the unbroken line of succession, succession from the time of the apostles. Jesus Christ entrusted to his apostles his own mission and commanded them to take it to all the nations. They, in turn, passed this authority and power down to their successors from one generation to the next. This was to ensure that all peoples of all generations till the end of time would hear the gospel and have life. Today, we witness an instance of this apostolic succession taking place in the Episcopal ordination of Archbishop Julian Liao. We thank God for this gift to us of a shepherd after the heart of Christ, the Good Shepherd. Through him, Christ the Good Shepherd looks after his flock in the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur and offers them life. Now, in line with the ordination rite, I shall address a few words to the Archbishop-elect. Dear Brother Julian, you have been chosen by the Lord. You have been chosen from among men and appointed to act for men and women in relation to God. As you realize very well, the office of bishop is one not of, not of honor, but of service. Humble service to the flock Christ is entrusting to your care. I am sure that as a mature man and priest, you are well aware of the challenges you will face as the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur Challenges that come from within and without the church. <clears throat> In my faith 
And from my experience, let me either assure you or affirm your own faith that as the Lord chooses a person for a mission, He also promises His presence and strength. For sure, your acceptance of the Lord's appointment of you as Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur came from this faith of yours. Indeed, you can confidently count on this assurance of the Lord as you serve His flock entrusted to your pastoral and fatherly care and draw every kind of grace for them from His overflowing holiness. As a steward of the mysteries of Christ in the church entrusted to you, you are to be a faithful overseer and guardian. Since you are chosen by the Father to rule over His family, you will always be mindful of the Good Shepherd. He knows His sheep, and His sheep know Him. <clears throat> he did not hesitate to lay down His life for them. As a father and a brother, you will love all those whom God places in your care, particularly the priests and those who share with you the ministry of Christ. With them and through them, you will reach out with your love to the poor and infirm, strangers and the homeless. It is most helpful also to draw the rest of the faithful to work with you in your apostolic task. Malaysia is a multiracial and multi-religious nation. The need to go beyond the diocese and the church faces every bishop in the country. <clears throat> Meeting this need is an integral part of the call to the Episcopal office. And this is particularly so for the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. We, the Malaysian bishops, we we'll look up to you for leadership and work together with you to make the church truly salt of the earth and light of the world in our country. We will strive to uphold the rights of every citizen, promote justice, and work towards peace and harmony in our country. We pray God to bless you with his wisdom and strength, courage and determination, humility and generosity to feed his flock in the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur, as well as extend your loving care to those outside the flock under your charge. In this way, through you, may the church in and beyond the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur, experience the loving presence of Christ the Good Shepherd so that there will be only one flock and one shepherd, Christ's flock and Christ the Shepherd. We have just heard the homily of Archbishop John Ha. We will now proceed to the promise of the elect. This is where the principal consecrating bishop asks the bishop elect to confirm his willingness to serve the flock the of Kuala Lumpur in faith and in love. Questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. Therefore, dear brother, are you resolved to discharge until death with the grace of the Holy Spirit the office entrusted to us by the apostles which we are about to pass on to you 
by the laying on of our hands. I am. Are you resolved to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I am. Are you resolved to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I am. Are you resolved to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain one with her in the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I am. Are you resolved to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I am. Are you resolved to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and to sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and the deacons? I am. Are you resolved for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers and to all who are in need? I am. Are you resolved as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I am. Are you resolved to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I am with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. The bishops will now rise and remove their mitres, now addressing not the congregation, but addressing their prayers to God, the Almighty Father. What will follow now is the litany of supplication, the litany of the saints to pray for the bishop-elect, to pray prior to the consecration as Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. The bishop-elect will now prostrate himself before the Lord housed in the tabernacle as the litany of saints is sung. Dearly beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the Church will yield an abundance of, of His grace for this chosen one. Peter. 
Peter and St. Paul. St. Andrew. St. John. St. Mary Magdalene. Ignatius of Antioch, Saint Lawrence, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, Saint Agnes, Saint Gregory. Saint Augustine, Saint Athanasius, Saint Basil, Saint Martin, Saint Benedict. Francis and Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint John Vianney, Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Teresa of Jesus. Saint Bernadette, Saint Philip Men and Companions, Saint Imber and Saint Shastan, Saint Andrew Dumlock and Companions, Saint Andrew Kim and Companions. Saint Pio, Saint Augustine, Jaurong and companions, Saint John the Twenty Third, Saint John Paul the Second, all holy men and women, saints of God. Lord be merciful, Lord deliver us we pray, from all evil, Lord deliver us we pray, from every sin, Lord deliver us we pray, from everlasting death. Your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us, sinners. and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you to Bring 
all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Strengthen all of your sin, keep us in your holy service. The Son of the Living God. Glorious Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. praying of the litany, we are asking for God to pour out his grace upon the new bishop. The bishop-elect will then rise and go forward to the principal ordaining bishop, who is standing at his chair wearing the mitre, and he will kneel before him to receive the sacrament Graciously of Episcopal ordination. The principal ordaining bishop will lay his servant, hands upon the, the bishop elect blessing, as a sign of the conference the of, of spiritual grace, grace the sacrament, Christ, and the authority Lord, of the episcopate. Then, one after another, all the bishops will go forward towards the bishop elect and lay their hands upon him to confer a blessing of consecration. After the laying of the hands, the bishops remain alongside the principal ordaining bishop until the end of the prayer of ordination. In this way, the faithful may have a clear view of the rite.
Now the Book of Gospels will be held over the head of the Bishop, symbolizing the weight of responsibility for upholding the Gospel message and the duty to sustain the people of God in the image of their Saviour. The Gospel Book will be held for the entire duration of the consecration prayer, which will be spoken by the principal consecrator and then the co-consecrators with him. With the bishop elect kneeling before them, the principal ordaining bishop, with his mitre put aside, will stand with the other ordaining bishops around him. With their hands outstretched, they will pray the prayer of ordination, after which the archbishop will rise. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look on the lowly and know all things before they came to be, you have provided order for your church through the word of your grace. From the beginning, you foreordained a nation of the just, born of Abraham, establishing rulers and priests, and not leaving your sanctuary without ministers. From the foundation of the world, you have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now, Upon this chosen one, pour out the power that is from you, the governing spirit, whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the spirit he bestowed on those holy apostles who established the church in every place as your sanctuary for the unceasing praise and glory of your name. Father, who knows all hearts, grant to this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, that he may shepherd your holy flock and serving you night and day, fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of high priest, so that he may ever gain favor in your sight and offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, distribute offices according to your decree, and loosen every bond 
in accord with the power you gave the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honour are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. The principal consecrator will now take holy chrism, holy oil that was blessed by the bishop at the chrism mass on Holy Thursday. The archbishop's head will be anointed with chrism as a symbol of the seal of the Holy Spirit. priesthood of Christ, pour upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings. Bishop will now be presented with the Book of Gospels, a symbol of his responsibility to preach the Word of God with integrity and tenderness. The new Archbishop will then receive his ring, which is a symbol of his fidelity to God and his duty to protect the Church, the Bride of Christ. Then he will receive his mitre that points towards heaven a symbol of his episcopal authority and dedication to God. After that, the crozier will be presented to the new archbishop, which is both a symbol of authority and of the bishop's role as shepherd of his flock in the manner of Christ, the eternal good shepherd. Then the new archbishop will be led to his seat or cathedra symbolic of his taking office the bishop Receive takes the gospel precedence and preach the word of god with all patience and sound teaching Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith. Preserve unblemished the Bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to, re to receive from him an unfailing crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God.
the chief consecrator now invites the Archbishop to take his seat and be installed as the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. The whole, the whole church rejoices. Kuala Lumpur has a new Archbishop, the Most Reverend Archbishop Julian Leo. And the whole church is erupting in applause to greet their new Archbishop. After this, in a symbol of fraternal unity and a symbol of the welcoming of the whole church for this new shepherd, the new Archbishop and his brothers in the Episcopate will exchange a kiss of peace. With the kiss of peace over, the representatives of the clergy, religious, and laity will now pledge their allegiance and pay their respects to the new Archbishop. Your Grace, 
on this day of your Episcopal ordination and installation, as Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, we, the clergy, religious, and laity, promise to remain steadfast to the Church's call to be called responsible and to work together with your grace in the Lord's vineyard as you shepherd the people of God with integrity and tenderness. The Mass will now continue with the Liturgy of the Eucharist. 
It will proceed as normal now with the new Archbishop presiding. The phrase Liturgy of the Eucharist describes the particular section of the Mass that involves the taking, blessing, breaking and sharing of the gifts of bread and wine in the manner of Christ at the Last Supper when he instituted the Eucharist and the new covenant in his blood. Following Christ's command to do this in memory of me, the Church has arranged the entire celebration of the Liturgy of the Eucharist in parts corresponding to precisely these words and actions of Christ. Now, at the pre preparation of the gifts, the bread and the wine with water are brought to the altar, the same elements Together that Christ took into his hands. Are representations of persons and places that reflect the significant moments of Archbishop Julian's life being offered for the greater glory of God as he begins this new chapter in his life. Millennia ago, the psalmist raised the question, what shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? The question is ours as well. How do we acknowledge the wonderful gifts that God has given to us? And the answer is that we offer simple gifts that contain a whole world of meaning. Christ's faithful, his holy church, takes simple bread and wine, the elements used by Jesus at the Last Supper, as the means of giving thanks and praise to God. Both elements are fruit of the earth and work of human hands. They represent not just basic food and drink, but more deeply they represent our whole lives. All that our lives are about, our work, our struggles, our hopes, our joys, our hungers, our satisfactions are symbolized in these gifts. We are united in our offering, just as many grains make one loaf and many grapes make one cup. When the bread and wine are carried up the aisle to the altar, it is all of our lives being carried there. It is our lives just as they are in the form of bread and wine which we place upon the altar as our offering to God.
What will then follow is the center and summit of the entire celebration and indeed of our faith, the Eucharistic prayer. This is the great prayer of thanksgiving and sanctification. The presider will invite the congregation to lift up their hearts to the Lord. He unites the congregation with himself in the prayer that he addresses in the name of the entire community to God the Father through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. Through the Eucharistic prayer, the entire congregation of the faithful, with one voice, through the voice, faith, and spirit of the priest, joins itself with Christ in confessing the great deeds of God and in offering the holy sacrifice of the Mass that brings salvation to the whole world. The, the Eucharistic prayer sanctifies or consecrates the offerings through the power of the Holy Spirit so that our gifts of bread and wine, the gift of our lives, becomes the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is as though God responds to our praise and gratitude by sharing even more richly and deeply the presence of His all-powerful and all-reaching love. To prepare the offering of this holy sacrifice, the concelebrating clergy, the altar and the gifts upon them, and the priests and people assisting at Mass are purified and blessed with incense, which also symbolizes our prayers rising to heaven and the response of God, of love, of mercy and compassion falling down as sweet fragrance. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfilment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. And they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished, by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, <clears throat> Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Julian Liao, our Bishop, who has been ordained today as shepherd for the Church of Kuala Lumpur with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. After praying the Our Father together, the faithful are now exchanging a sign of the peace of Christ. The sign of peace in the Mass is significantly placed before the Eucharistic Communion as a particularly expressive gesture which the faithful are invited to make as a manifestation of the people of God's acceptance that all that has been accomplished in the celebration of the Mass and of the commitment to mutual love which is made in the sharing of one bread. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
the faithful now receive the body and blood of Christ. Through communion, the faithful, though they are many, receive from the one bread the Lord's body, and from the one chalice the Lord's blood. In the same way, the apostles received them from Christ's own hands. Because of the belief, unique to the Apostolic Church of Rome and the Orthodox Churches, that transubstantiation takes place, transforming the elements of bread and wine into the true body and blood of Christ, only baptized Catholics are permitted to present themselves for communion, where each gives their assent in the Amen to the belief that what they are receiving is truly the flesh and blood of the Savior. For those of you at home watching this ordination and installation Mass, and who are unable to participate in communion, and for non-Catholics who wish to receive a non-sacramental but spiritual blessing through this witness of thanksgiving and sacrifice, please feel free to join me in this prayer for spiritual communion with the Lord. Heavenly Father, as I cannot this day enjoy the happiness of assisting at the Holy Mysteries, my Lord and my God, I transport myself in spirit at the foot of your altar in heaven. I unite with the Church, which by the hands of the priest offers to you, for the salvation of the world, your only begotten Son in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. I offer myself with him, by him, and in his name. I adore, I, ap I praise, and I thank you, imploring your mercy invoking your assistance and presenting you the homage I owe you as my Creator, the love due to you as my Saviour. Apply to my soul, I beseech you, O merciful Jesus, your infinite merits. Apply them also to those for whom I particularly wish to pray. I desire to communicate spiritually, that your blood may purify, that your flesh may strengthen, and that your spirit may sanctify me. May I never forget that you, my divine Redeemer, have died for me, that hereafter I may live eternally with you. Amen.
as the celebration of Holy Mass for the Episcopal ordination and installation of Archbishop Julian Leo draws to a close. And as we await his blessing, please join me in a prayer for his grace. God our Father, who sent your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as our shepherd, our guide, and our Redeemer, we give you thanks for giving us this day a shepherd to love and lead your flock in this our Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. Look with your all-encompassing love on your servant, Archbishop Julian, and grant him the abundant blessings of your grace to minister to us, your priests and people, with integrity and tenderness. Grant him health of body, strength of mind, fortitude of spirit, and fervor in faith, that he may lead us ever closer to your kingdom, where with Jesus Christ your Son you live and reign in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, Endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of a holy flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. Amen. As in your majestic power you allot the number of days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer in our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfilment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastor, that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you gathered. And may Almighty God bless all of you gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Go and announce the gospel to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Umat dipersilahkan duduk. Sekarang kita menjemput Father Josh Harrison selaku pengerusi jawatan kuasa Penganjur terpentah pisan untuk memberikan sepatah dua kata kepada para umat hadirin. Please be seated. We now call upon Father George Harrison, the Chairman of the Ordination Committee, to address the congregation. Selamat datang kepada semua para hadirin. Welcome to each and every one of you for having come here to celebrate together this Episcopal ordination of the 4th Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, Julian Liao Benkit. I have a Nepali worker, his name is Bijai. He is Hindu. He was asking me, Father, Apa Basal, Suplo Ribu Mari Kajang O, Sini Bolega. Apa pasal itu topi punya Bishop Mari sini? Boleh ka? Father, 10,000 people can manage. He doesn't understand what is this taking place and what is this Episcopal ordination all about. So I guess he must be here. I invited him to come. And I must thank God for this fine weather, for this smooth uh, flow of this celebration. And let's give a big round of applause to God the Most High. Last night, I was checking the name of the new Archbishop, Liao Ping Jian. So in the dictionary it says, this Ping uh, has got fire in front. And when there is fire, it is brightness, it is power. And then the Jian uh, we use for sacrament, for confirmation. Now that Jian is something that is solid and firm. I guess God has purpose in confirming his choice upon the new Archbishop. So we are very happy to celebrate together because the last, perhaps, Kuala Lumpur Archdiocese would have seen an, um, an Episcopal ordination must have been like in 1980s, if I'm not mistaken, Bishop Selva. 
And now we have a new Archbishop. People ask, why Holy Family Kajang? Well, the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph did not have place to lay the child. <laughs> they went around looking at Shalom, looking at Putrada and everywhere. Finally, they have to look at Kajang. <laughs> not because the place is huge, it's because Adasate. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to give you all sate today. The shops are closed. <laughs> but we have nice makan for all of you to sit back and relax. So they had no inn, no place. They have to lay baby Jesus upon the manger. And so we have our Archbishop to come and lay himself here. We are very fortunate, I guess, when they showed the holy family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, they were looking upon him and prayed and blessed him. So, this child is born today, our new Archbishop, Julian Liao. <laughs> 10,000. I guess it's more than that 10,000. God gave us miracle at the back. So many miraculous things taking place in the sacristy at the back. So many people are at work since this morning, early morning, preparing for us, I must thank God for this wonderful liturgical team under the head of Father Leonard Lexon and all the fathers and the team members. It would not be possible even for me when the then Father Julian arrived after announcement to me asking me to head this group and I said no, I hesitated. How can it be? I'm all alone here. But then thinking of Kajang and what the leaders here and everyone here can do, I told him yes. And I depended a lot upon the team in Kajang under the head of uh, Jude Benjamin, the chairman of this parish and the rest of the uh, members who are still working tirelessly for this occasion. A big clap for all of you. I must thank you, my brother priest, for allowing me to feel that I could do because you were giving me words of encouragement. And I must thank you for that. And Bishop Murphy Pakyam, Archbishop, also has been motivating me, encouraging me in going ahead and organizing this. I remember priests who are not well at this moment, Father Murray, perhaps, I'm not sure he's here. Must thank God for Father Wold to be here, Father Amala, our own Father Aryo, Father Thomas, and many others who are perhaps not here today. Our minds also go for um, the late Archbishop Van Dagen. Now we have our own Arch Archbishop Sote and Murphy Parkiam, our shepherds who led and now passed on to Archbishop Julian. Thank you, my dear shepherds. Now let me come back to Sate Kajang. We must perhaps give a good makan, sate, for the choir. Seven Sundays, seven Sundays, they have come here without fail from six right up to 11 in the night. I have to close the gate at 10.30. But never mind, you made me do work over time. Thank you, my dear. I've done that. So that's enough for me. Thank you. Terima kasih. Sisi Niman. Nandri. Now, I call upon His Grace Archbishop Marino, the Nuncio to Malaysia.
to say a few words. I can only echo what Father just said to thank everyone for preparing this beautiful celebration and for the deep faith and joy that we have all witnessed today at the ordination of your new bishop. So thank you very much, Father, for your work and for all the people who were with you. For the last Ten months or so, the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur has been without a bishop, and during that time, Archbishop Pakiam administered the diocese and literally took care of it as we awaited our new bishop. So, Archbishop, thank you for taking care. Before I refer to some remarks I, re, uh, I prepared, I see, I presume this is your family on the front row, Archbishop, a beautiful family. I see some young people there, and it brought me back a few years when I was uh, ordained, and my nephews were there, and uh, after the ceremony, uh, I asked them, I said, Patrick and Christopher, and then my nieces were there, and I asked them, Olivia and Isabel, everybody. Uh, what did you think of this uh, mass today? Say it was it was okay, but <laughs> but when you were laying down, we noticed you were wearing the coolest socks we've ever seen, the bishop socks. <laughs> so God bless your family as well, Archbishop. <laughs> Something new always happens when a sacrament in the church is administered for the individual who receives it and for the community that witnesses it. And today, something new has happened for your son, our brother, Julian, as he received the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders with the pouring of oil upon his head and the words of consecration, he became your bishop. Receiving all the graces and the capacity to exercise the ministry given to him by Christ through the mandate of Pope Francis. And so for this community, something very new is happening as it embraces its new bishop. Yes, Pope Francis, in the free exercise of his supreme authority in caring for the whole church throughout the world, has given to this local church a new shepherd. And dearest Julian, the Holy Father knows you. As he told a group of recently ordained bishops meeting in the Vatican, and I think two of them here were there, he said, to them, I must say that in some way, I already know you because the prefect brought your name to me before I appointed you. And the Holy Father chose Julian Luau, fully aware of his outstanding human, intellectual, priestly, and pastoral qualities. And now, Archbishop, you are to place those qualities at the service of the people entrusted to your care today. In the same talk that the Holy Father gave to those recently ordained bishops, he referred to his exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, reminding them that today in the church, there is an absolute need for missionary conversion. 
And he went on to say, for this to happen, the bishops must order their lives and their ministries to a missionary transformation which challenges the entire people of God. In other words, dearest Julian, our Holy Father is calling the church to something new. And permit me, Archbishop, just to repeat some words of our beloved Holy Father in that regard. He said, we're all looking for something new in the church, but every transformation and every reform in the church always begins with presence because there is an inalienable link, a bond, between the steadfast presence of the bishop and the growth of the flock. But it is not just any presence, not just a physical presence. It is a presence marked by a service to humanity and by an evangelizing spirit, which means, and these are the Pope's words, to grow in proximity, to bridge differences, to abase oneself to the point of humiliation, to embrace human life by touching the sufferings of our brothers and sisters, and to kneel before them to wash their feet. In, the, in, in other words, the Pope went on to say, you are to be close to your people as a meek and merciful father and a brother. You are to be close to your priest, foster religious life, and love the poor. And then he finished his talk with these words. He said, and this is just about 10 days ago, I see in you pastors capable of reconstructing unity, of weaving networks, of mending, of overcoming fragmentation. May you dialogue with the great traditions in which you are immersed without fear of, be of becoming lost and, with and without the need to defend your borders because the identity of the church is defined by the love of Christ who knows no borders. While jealously safeguarding the passion for the truth, do not expend energy on opposing and confronting, but on building and loving. Dear Archbishop, Slowly, and this idea comes from the Pope too, the emotion of this solemn moment will fade into your memory and even in the memory of this community, although I think this one is gonna take a little longer to fade into memory. And you will begin to feel ever more the weight of the responsibility just given to you. But always be assured that it was God who chose you and today his grace was given to you. Be assured of the support of the priest, the religious, and laity of this truly beautiful church, the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. Today, placed in your loving hands by Christ, the Chief Shepherd. And as such, something new will continue to happen for you and for all of us under your care. Thank you. Terima kasih kita ucapkan kepada Nuncius Paus, Uskup Agung Joseph Marino, dan juga kepada Reverend Father George selaku pengerusi jawatan kuasa penganjur pentahbisan di atas ucapan dan inspirasinya.
Thank you to Reverend Father Josh, the Chairman of the Organising Committee, and to the Papal Nuncio Archbishop Joseph Marino for your encouraging and inspiring addresses. Sekarang tiba masanya untuk kita menjemput Uskup Agung yang baru ditapiskan sebagai Uskup Agung Kuala Lumpur yang keempat, Yang Mulia Reverend Julian Liao untuk memberi sepatah dua kata kepada umat Allah sekalian. We now call upon our newly ordained Bishop, Most Reverend Julian Liao, installed as the fourth Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur to address the people of God. Good afternoon, Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Joseph Marino, our Principal Consecrator, Archbishop John Ha, our Co-Consecrators, Bishops Pakiam and Sote, our other Archbishops and Bishops from all over Malaysia and our neighbouring countries, fathers, sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, and not forgetting our Ambassadors, High Commissioners, uh, Ministers, Excellencies, Seminarians, and all of you who are here from far and near. It's already three and a half hours since we started. So I think I'll make my... I've got a four-page speech prepared. <laughs> I may just give it to Harold and let them print it next week. Uh, so we can, we can go off early. Our parish priest, Father George, has already thanked the main people just now. I wouldn't want to repeat it. I, say, I share the same sentiments with all, of, all those people he thanked. I just want to add the, the few people that I missed out in the booklet. I've written a short message for each one of you. Huh? If you get a hold of the booklet, your different groups... But I just want to thank once again the organizing committee um, who have worked so hard, those you see and those you do not see uh, in the background, so many of them, the whole parish in fact. I just want to record my thanks to each one of them again. And also those who are watching this at home, all over the world, I've been told they are going to tune in to the YouTube so I just want to, is that the camera? Just want to say <laughs> thank you for praying for me, for witnessing. And they promised wherever they were, they were going to pray during this celebration. And to those who have sacrificed coming into this air-conditioned hall, church, sorry, and are now outside in the sun. I thank you for sacrificing your place to allow all of us to be in here. I'm not sure whether Harold will print the four pages. Should I read it out? Yes. You will print or you want me to read? Read and print. I'll just pick out highlights, okay? It won't take more than five minutes. Since you have spent three and a half hours, five minutes more won't make any difference. So, saya akan memberi ucapan lima minit sahaja. Saya harap, eh, lima minit, supaya kita dapat mendengar beberapa butir-butir yang saya hendak mengemukakan. Um, we need to rewrite the script that is being read and acted out today. The one that is tearing our nation apart. 
we must produce a new and fresh narrative. One of not only having a shared destiny of peace, prosperity and harmony, together for the present and the future, but of understanding our shared past of mutual respect, dependence and cooperation. If we as a nation have not reconciled our past of how we have struggled side by side to build up this nation, if we do not acknowledge the contributions and the sacrifices of so many people before us, even now and will come, we will continue to stagnate and will never progress to be who we can and should be as Malaysians. A nation divided in herself can never stand tall. This new narrative is not about competing among each other to see who is first, who is superior, who is most successful. But our strength as a nation is gauged by how we treat the weakest and the most vulnerable among us. The most neglected of our society must be our priority to move this nation forward. And as the church, we must care for the frailest because we are only as strong and united as the weakest member. The future of our nation will depend on this new narrative that is being taught to our young the values we need to instill in all, beginning from the young, is this. Malaysia needs united Malaysians in mind, in heart, and in our soul. We must inculcate values of mutual upbuilding, prospering our neighbour, debt of mutual love, outdoing each other in doing good, wanting the best for the other, recognizing the divine in each person as we are all made in the image of our Creator. And my dear friends, my pastoral priorities would be the four L's, not Liao, eh? the four L's, the lost, the last, the little and the least. I want to bring back the lost, those who have strayed away from our church for whatever reason. I urge you to come back home. The church needs you and you are restless until you find rest in the bosom of Mother Church. And here is where we need to go out and to search for the lost sheep, to bandage its wounds and to carry it back on our shoulders. The last. The last I categorize as the migrants in our archdiocese who have left everything in search for a better life. I want to make them welcome. I want them to know that they have a safe place in the church and that God loves you very much. And we as hosts, we can play a more supportive and proactive role in this area. We need to strengthen personnel and to provide space for these people. The least are the voiceless, the neglected, the oppressed, the forgotten of society. There is refuge and there is a place for everyone 
and the church must speak out for them. We must provide and care for the weakest in our midst. And the little, I categorize as the youth, the young, who need a solid understanding of the faith, preparing them for the challenges that they will encounter. Therefore, our catechesis must be revisited, restudied to ensure our youth know why they believe what they believe and be convinced of this one true faith. And my dear friends, not only understanding our own faith is important, but as Malaysians, we need to also know the faith of those we live with in this country. Therefore, inter-religious dialogue is so crucial in a country like ours. This will dispel misconceptions and create a healthy atmosphere of mutual respect. Just yesterday, we had a gathering of Paulians. Do you know what Paulians are? Where are our Paulians? A few are here. Paulians are not aliens from <laughs> with a P, yeah? they are from St. Paul's. And we had a wonderful gathering yesterday of our class of 81. And Dominic Xiao, my best friend, is here. Nick, would you mind standing? He spoke about greatness. And greatness is when we have contributed something for another, for their benefit. And this is where we need to practice prospering our neighbour. Great men and women are remembered by history when they have given to society, how they have enriched humanity by philosophy, by theology, by their thoughts, by their words, by their deeds. Therefore, I ask you, what do I want to be remembered by? What do we as a nation want to be remembered for? What is our contribution, each one of us, to this nation, Malaysia? And in conclusion, my dear friends, we are at the crossroads of our future as Malaysians. A future from a shared past that we as people of many faiths have built up and sacrificed much for. I pray, I truly pray that common sense will prevail and that difficult but right decisions are made always by us and by, by our leaders. Therefore, dear friends, with your support, with your sacrifice, with your prayers, my dear people of God, and especially my sons, my closest companions, the clergy, not forgetting our deacon, my priests, I dedicate myself and my office to this task of healing and building our nation, Malaysia. And I just want to say thank you in Burmese. I'm not sure whether it's the correct pronunciation. Che Su Tin Bade. Nepali. Danyabad, Punjabi, Shukya, Singhalese, I think so, Bohoma Stutiji, Tagalog, Maraming Salamapo, 
รมนันรีขอบคุณครับทำเอ็นบาอินเวียดนามีสเซียเซียนิมันว่ามันเดเจ้าอยู่很远来参加我们的今天的弥撒，我要感谢你们，我真正要感谢主，给我这个机会可以做你的宗主教，我需要你的帮助，需要你的祈祷，所以我们一起可以。多一点工作，多一点祈祷，所以我们的啊、呃、国家马来西亚可以长大，可以变一个地方。我们每个人都可以在这里认识耶稣，认识每个人，也是分享天主的爱，福音传给那些还没知道他。Actually, I have a demo speech also prepared, but I will not let you go through the agony. And I just say, Roman Andri, and terima kasih kepada kamu semua. Together now, we sing the recessional hymn. We stand for God.
Thank you for joining.